Hello there guys, it's Chester again from Hong Kong Cigars and Whiskey. Let's see if uh, anyone's joining us. We have one viewer. I know. Hello there. Uh, we have Exit Lovers, uh, Tim Horton, 82 as well. Hello there. Hi, Cha Cha0919. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I actually have a uh, Monte Cristo uh, Linear 1935, if you can all see that. I was having this yesterday and uh, right in the middle of having this I actually had to leave so the guys at the cigar bar cut my cigar and subsequently when they cut it it busted open okay I'm not sure if you guys can see this it's uh, the cigar is busted open at the end And only pre-loved goods is watching now. Okay, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show everyone how to rescue a cigar like this. So it's it's pretty easy to just light a cigar up, but in order to keep it uh, going correctly so that the cracks like these don't affect your smoke, it does require a bit of technique. So here I go. So there's lots of ways to light a cigar. There's only one wrong way to do it, and that is to overburn uh, the wrapper. Now, as you can see, I'm starting up, just starting to char the end of the cigar. All you need to do is light the outer edges. The middle will take care of itself. So you see I'm just lightly pointing the end of the flame to the edge whilst I turn it. To make sure you get a good consistent burn as well. A lot of people will do this with the cigar. To try and put air through the top of the cigar to the end. I actually like to do it the other way. I actually like to blow on this end which is more direct if you want to fan the fire at the end of the, uh, fan the flame at the end of the cigar. Hello, Henry Jung and Leo, how are you? So I'm just going to be talking about how to rescue a cigar that's been cut and cracked, as you can see, okay? And a lot of people will uh, get a cigar, either brand new, one that hasn't been smoked, or one like this, which has been smoked about a uh, quarter of the way, and uh, it cracks, okay? Hey there, Leo. And so, you know, what often can happen is if you don't smoke it correctly and control the cigar correctly, this can often lead to what looks like an exploded dynamite stick, okay? just making sure that it's well lit so whilst we wait for this to burn properly a little bit about the uh, the Lanier uh, 1935 cigars there were three sizes made um, the three sizes made were uh, the 49 ring gauge, the 53 ring gauge, and the 55 ring gauge. This one is the 55. Those who know me know that I prefer not to smoke anything below a 50 ring gauge, um, nor anything too long. Uh, I like big puffs of smoke, 
so it's much easier to get a big puff of smoke from a larger ring gauge and it's easier for yourself uh, in order to, to draw it in, okay? Okay, uh, I've been asked how much is it? To be honest, I don't know how much it is. I will get back to you on that because I actually got this as a gift. Okay, so we've now got a nice burn on the cigar, as you can see. Let's see. Um, can you have one? Whoa. If you can find it in your specific location, I'm pretty sure you can have one. Okay, so the box that it comes in is a very dark brown box. It's actually very well made. Um, Monte Cristos usually do the run of the mill cedar wood cigar box. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But uh, so we're looking at the ring gauge, 49 ring gauge, uh, linear 1935 for a box of 20, they're roughly around 490 pounds online, okay? Um, so you can equate that to your own currency. Um, you can buy this at most uh, cigar retail shops. Hi there, Ben, who's in Australia and probably quite late right now if he's on the East Coast. So you see the, the cracks, we're starting to get to the cracks, right? The cracks that were there at the start. Hey Ben. So what we're trying to do now is to consistently burn. What you don't want it to do is to continue to smoke it, have the heat come in from the inside, okay? So if you're smoking it, the filler, which is the tobacco right here, gets hot on the inside. The harder it is that you draw on the cigar, the hotter it is it'll get on the inside. What happens is when you draw, it gets hotter on the inside than it is on the outside, it will expand, which means it'll push the wrapper, which is this on the outside. Actually, if you can still see it, underneath the wrapper, underneath this crack, you'll see that there's a lighter colored layer there. It's called the binder. That's what keeps the tobacco you're smoking together at the start. Can you speak Chinese? Well, I speak Guangdonghua. I can speak Chinese. So, in in any case, um, I'll be doing this in English because uh, most of the subscribers at this time of the night are actually from Europe um, and from the US. So, what happens is if you smoke it and you draw on it um, too hard, it'll get too hot on the inside. It'll expand and it'll crack the cigar and it'll keep cracking right up until the rings. And if you take the rings off, it'll just con continue to crack right up until uh, where you're smoking at the top of the cigar. So what you should do is as you're smoking and as it burns, you wanna make sure you consistently um, burn it off. I know that a lot of people don't like to continue to light the cigar, the smoke gets too hot, but if you're not drawing too hard on the cigar, it should be okay, okay? So I would say within maybe 10 minutes of now, I will have gone past this crack and the cigar will smoke like a normal cigar. Okay, as you can see, basically gone past all the cracks. As long as we've gone past the cracks right here, the rest of the cigar should smoke okay. Someone's asking me to do this in Mandarin. Uh, no, <laughs> that's the simple answer. I can, but I think today we can see my my translation should be better than Chinese. 
um, Leo says buy GME AMC NOK I have no idea what that is what is GME Okay, so we've just got a little bit of the cracks left to move past, and then we should be uh, home free. So as you can see, the uh, the cigar was kept <clears throat> a little wet. The cigar was kept a little wet, so the ash. Okay, yeah, GameStop, the the one that uh, the hedge fund managers in the US shorted uh, to try to make money on, but the rest of the market got together and pumped it back up again to, to make the hedge funds lose money. That's I heard about that today, actually. So, <coughs> so anyway, uh, if you see the ash, you'll see that it's very light-colored here, and it gets darker. When the ash is dark, it means it's a little too wet, a little too moist. Um, in Hong Kong here, we're actually going through a winter, which doesn't quite feel like a winter, but it is winter. So it is, uh, you know, it is, uh, you know, atypical to be that wet. But when the guys cut the cigar yesterday, um, hello there, young cigars. Thank you for joining us. So when you, when people cut my cigar last night, um, they cut it too close Right, in order to preserve more of the cigar, they cut it too close to the end. And so when they did that, it, it always cracks. So I'm not sure whether any of you have actually smoked a cigar uh, and uh, cut the cigar because you had to leave or put it down halfway through. But if you cut it too close to this end, you will crack it, okay? So don't cut it close to this end, all right? There's several reasons for that. This end is less structurally sound and this end is also drier because it is heated. Okay, this end, you can touch it, it's cool to the touch, okay? So if you cut it, it's not as dry, the heat has not affected the humidity of the cigar as much it has on this end. So if you cut it close to this end, it's drier and it's less structurally supported, right? Because this end, there is nothing. If you cut it here, there's still filler on both sides to hold it up. So please take note, if you do cut a cigar, if you do have to put it down and say, come back in a couple of hours or something, cut it, because if you leave ash on the end of it, it will be bitter when you start smoking it again. When you cut it, don't cut it too close to the end, right? Don't, uh, don't think, oh yeah, I wanna save more of the cigar and you know, I wanna cut it closer to the top of the cigar. Make sure you cut it toward the end of the cigar, because if you cut toward the end of the cigar, it'll hold together much better when you smoke it, uh, when you relight it again. So some of you might uh, might be wondering, well, Chester, you look kind of young um, and uh, you seem to be talking a lot about cigars and how to smoke it and things like that. So how long have you been smoking for? Well, I turned 39 a couple of days ago. Uh, I've been smoking cigars for about 17 years. So um, discovered smoking cigars by accident. Um, I was in university walking down the street and uh, one of the most beautiful cigar places I'd ever been to in the world uh, is called Baron Owls. Uh, they've since moved away from that location because the, the laws within that particular area of Melbourne where I was uh, changed and you were not allowed to smoke indoors anymore. A lot of cigar bars actually closed down. Uh, for example, the one at Crown Casino in Melbourne closed down as well. So, thanks Ben. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I walked in and it was magnificent. It was nothing like anywhere I'd ever seen before. Um, had that kind of air of, uh, so it, it was in a gothic structure, a very gothic structure. Uh, yes, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, it is, uh, 
it is exactly that, uh, Young Cigars. It's a good pickup. Um, this one is actually the, uh, let me see. This is actually the uh, Leander, which is the 55 ring gauge. Um, the one that uh, you're talking about is the 53. So very, very good eye. Um, well done. And thank you very much, Young Cigars. Uh, yeah, so, uh, actually, no, it is the Leander, sorry, it is on the label, it's the 53, it's the 53, if you can see that. It is the Leander, right? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I walked in, and, uh, it was, it was one of the most beautiful places I'd ever seen. Gothic, out of structure, uh, I, I love uh, historic architecture as well. So it was, it was one of the older buildings in Melbourne. Inside was was done out. It was a nice long bar on the left, and on the right, it was one of the longest uh, indoor humidors uh, or, uh, in the world. Just a, a pane of glass that goes uh, all the way to the end of the bar, and all full of cigars. And I walked in, had no idea what I was doing, no idea what it was like to smoke cigars. <clears throat> And uh, Ben, the son of the proprietor back then, who eventually ended up taking over the business, I believe they still do uh, sell cigars, but online. Uh, um, so check them out, uh, Baron Owls in Australia. Uh, and, uh, you know, he walked me through, um, you know, looked at me. I was very young, uh, university student. He wouldn't have expected me to be uh one of his larger customers but he served me nonetheless as if i was one of his larger customers one of his uh, more you know vips and uh ended up uh ended up buying and that's how i started question from cha cha 0919 what what country has the best cigar well it depends on your taste um so during the cuban uh, communist revolution um, the wealthiest uh, in Cuba, which were the cigar plantation owners, they basically took as much of their stock, their seeds, and the young plants as they could, and they crossed the border into their neighboring Spanish-speaking countries, uh, the Honduras of the world, and um, uh, other Dominican Republic, all the other non-Cuban uh, cigar producing countries and started their own brand again anew in those countries um, they they have similar weather soils different um, you know the rain the seasons how, how long rains for is different um, so it, it's hard to say which one has the best cigars obviously the most famous cigars um, are Cuban cigars um, even Davidoff, which everyone says, oh, Davidoff's not a Cuban, Davidoff's not a Cuban. But Davidoff started as Cubans. Um, I'm not sure whether any of you have smoked um, a Cuban Davidoff. I have smoked Cuban Davidoff before, and uh, they are a great smoke, and very, very, very rare, as they haven't been Cuban for a very long time. Thank you, Ben, for staying online to listen to me ramble and smoke my cigar. <clears throat> so we've now gone past all the cracks, as you can see. Um, just a very light one that's carried on uh, from when we started. Uh, we'll fix that in a second as we go through the rest of the cigar. It should burn okay. It looks much better now than it did when we first started. The ash still is a little dark. Um, for some reason it is quite moist I think when they had it because it's it was kept in a in a tube for me um, when I took it away so it, it may have been quite moist uh, where we were um, and uh, hence it's still burning quite dark right no viewer question uh, are cigars natural? Well, cigars are natural. Um, it's the one big question we always get asked when we smoke cigars is, well, how is that different from a cigarette? It's just a much bigger cigarette. It's not. 
um, for starters, if you smoked a cigar and you left it and you didn't smoke it, it always goes out. Okay. The reason for that is there are no chemicals involved in the production of cigars. So there are no accelerants, right? It doesn't help it burn. If you left it, it'll just burn itself out. Um, so it's not uh, in terms of uh, safety. I would never leave my cigar in my house uh, unattended. Like if I left to, to, let's say, grab a drink or something like that, um, it's okay. I would leave it unattended. But I would never leave it in the house and then go outside, okay? Because you never know what might happen. Um, but with cigarettes, if you lit one and you let it sit, it'll burn all the way through on its own, okay? Because it's got a accelerant in the, uh, in the wrapping paper. This does not, it has not been treated to burn all the way through either. Um, so it will, as you can see, burn unevenly, okay? The other thing too is when you smoke cigars, um, it is never done um, by inhaling it into your lungs. When you smoke cigars, it is just uh, what the Aussies would call bum fluff smoking, which is just to draw it into your mouth and then blowing that smoke back out, right? What you get out of smoking a cigar, and that's also a question I get asked very often, um, well, if it, if it doesn't do anything for you, why do you smoke it, right? Um, if you smoke a cigarette, it helps you to relax. Um, if you smoke a cigarette, it may calm your nerves, um, some people cannot go to the bathroom without smoking a cigarette. So what does, uh, what does a cigar do? Well, a couple of things a cigar does is when you smoke it, you really can tell the difference between the brands that you smoke. It does taste different. Uh, Code9Keith, hello, and thank you very much for joining us. Um, so when you smoke a cigar, um, so if you, if you see at the top here, of the cigar you might see minor indentations um, that are slightly darker that's indentations of my teeth so when I bite on the cigar and my saliva makes contact with the cigar I am actually ingesting the juices from the tobacco right so it may be dry tobacco but there are still juices when when you uh, when you have saliva come in contact with it and then you ingest it there are flavors okay so what you can do is you can lick uh, lick your teeth lick the inside of your mouth uh, and uh, you can taste tobacco flavors second thing it'll do is it does still have nicotine on average a cigar may have about 40 30 to 40 times if it's a large cigar many more times than a cigarette Okay, so for people wanting their kicks of, kill, uh, of uh, nicotine, you can smoke cigars. Uh, one thing nicotine does do for you is it'll keep you awake. So if you smoke a cigar right before you go to bed, it may not be the best idea. Um, it also helps you to digest. So if you've had a very big meal, um, and you know, tradition in, in the US, um, going back a couple hundred years, or even in, uh, in the UK, is they would have cigars and brandy. Uh, brandy is sweet. It produces uh, it produces uh, more digest more more digestive juices in your stomach, uh, and it has the same effect uh, when you smoke a cigar. It'll help you to produce more uh, enzymes and so forth. You will not feel as bloated um, much sooner. Okay. Is one cigar a day bad? Well depends what you call bad if it's uh, is it bad for your health well so far um, it's a general blanket the medical community has a general blanket statement that says smoking is bad for your health whenever you buy cigars those warnings are on the cigars that you buy whether you buy them per stick or you buy them per box uh, the labels are very clear um, as mandated by the government uh, but um, are they bad for you? Well, they are natural. You don't breathe them into your lungs. Yes, you do breathe in the se uh, the, the smoke that comes off the cigar, but um, they are, for remind you, dust particles that's lighter than air. Um, they will get into your lungs, but if you you know if you smoke one a day, two a day, it's it's not bad bad. Um, lung cancer is not produced by that. It's produced by the tar from uh, from the smoke. 
uh, the tar from the smoke comes from the accelerant that's on the actual paper. So cigarettes are bad, cigars, not proven to be medically bad. I mean, if you look at Fidel Castro, Fidel Castro actually smoked these like cigarettes. Um, he smoked them into his lungs and yet he did not die an early death from lung cancer. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah. Um, what is the rarest cigar? Well, rarest cigars obviously cigars that are no longer produced um, there are brands that came before the ones that we know um, there are a bunch of brands right now that are very active and even then they have their own stock that's been kept uh, for quite some time um, so you can tell uh, how old a cigar is obviously by the label on the box underneath the box of cigars it'll have the month and year it was produced um, but another way you can tell is by the label so you can tell this is a recently produced uh, Monte Cristo because the Monte Cristo um, older uh, cigar bands were just brown and white you'll see that there are gold lines that run through here and in the logo on the label okay that's one way you can tell whether it's a, an old cigar or a new cigar um, the band was thinner as well and the logo smaller for the uh, for the original ones, um, and they I, I don't think those labels changed um, right up until the last couple of years, right? So these are definitely new uh, new labels. Um, I think they came this this sort of label came out when uh, the open series uh, of Monte Cristos came out, like the open ego uh, open eagles open masters, uh, which were Monte Cristo cigars designed for smoking outdoors, believe it or not. Um, anyway, so as you can see from the smoke, um, yesterday it was kept in a wetter place uh, when it was cut. Um, the rest of the cigar has now started to dry out. As you can see the smoke, um, the ash has begun to um, turn grey instead of black. Okay, you can see those bits which are black, these bits which are grey. You will see clearly here as well, there are lines that run across the ash. Okay. Uh, those lines are a result of every single puff. So when you draw on the cigar, it creates a ring. The larger, the harder you draw, the larger the crease on the ring. So if you have, some people like to leave the ash on the cigar, I also like to do that as well. Keeps the uh, smoke cooler. The longer the ash is, the cooler your smoke is. Um, I don't quite understand the science behind it, but it is true. Uh, and uh, when you when you smoke it, if it is that long, you really do need to avoid big, large draws because if you do do that, number one, you move the cigar when you draw. Uh, number two, the larger you draw, the larger the crease, so the more likely the ash will topple over. Okay, from pre-loved goods garage sale, does it matter in which country a cigar is made? Um, it does if you live in the US because of the trade embargo and you can you cannot uh, directly import a Cuban cigar okay I believe all Cuban cigars are still uh, not legal in the US so brands like Davidoff have moved out of Cuba um, uh, brands like Monte Cristo um, Cohibas they also have factories that are outside of Cuba so they're the non-Cuban Montes and the non-Cuban uh, 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 Cohibas, and those can be smoked in the US. But uh, usually when people do bring Cuban cigars into the US, they will remove the bands, okay? So that they can't tell what, uh, what the original, um, original factory was and where the cigars came from. But most likely they won't come straight into the US, they will most likely come through Canada, uh, which has direct flights to Cuba. Um, speaking of bands, two bands on a cigar, what does that mean? Okay, um, Single band cigars are your regular production. Dual band cigars are special editions. Okay, May not be uh, limited edition, may not be limited production, but they are special editions. Okay, So they're produced a little differently. They may use different tobacco leaves. Um, for the Cohiba Bihikis, which are very very hard to find now no matter what uh, what size um, 
the special part of this is they only use the top very 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 top leaves at the top of the plant so this the smoke is a lot smoother okay um, they may use more of the leaves further down the plant for the filler uh, in most other cigars but for the vehikis they only use the top two types of leaves which which are very very supple and very very young and new Well, the ash just fell off. As you can see, no more cracks, right? So coming from, uh, coming from a cigar that was severely cracked all round, we've now taken it back to a regular burning cigar, right? As Barat would say, big success. Um, okay, uh, what is the best lighter for a cigar? Okay, so I have um, a table lighter produced from Siglo. Um, it has seen quite a bit uh, of wear and tear. Um, it uses butane gas, so it fills up from the bottom. Um, blue flame okay um, you can actually use it for smoking other things like pipes um, and it'll come out it's not quite working okay there you go okay there you go This is the best type of uh, the lighter that you can uh, use for cigars because number one, you, as you can see, there's a tip at the end of the flame, okay? So if you were, and I'll just demonstrate for you right now, as you can see, this is not burning evenly. The wrapper um, is burnt more on this side and less on this side. So if you have a butane gas lighter, what that means is you can use the tip and guide your way around just very lightly and make sure you get an even burn around the cigar okay now a lot of people uh, who don't smoke cigars regularly will always say oh but uh, you know I'm not very good at smoking a cigar because I get an uneven burn well uh, yes and no um, not having the experience smoking um, a cigar can uh, eventuate in an uneven burn uh, and the reason why you get an uneven burn is because what you can't see in the room is that your air circulates in the room okay so underneath this countertop right now uh, I have a blue air pro uh, smoke stop with an extra carbon filter air filter that's running okay so that gets rid of all the cigar smoke smell in my house um, so there's air circulating from that, okay? There's an exhaust fan there that I usually turn on um, when I smoke in the house. Um, I do not have that turned on right now. There is another fan that's up here that you can't see. Um, that is turned on right now. I've also got a fan running over there that keeps all the smoke to this side of the house in my open kitchen so that the uh, exhaust fans and, uh, and the filter will capture most of the uh, cigar smoke when I when I exhale so uh, the circulation the flow of air can also uh, affect the burn on your cigar um, hi there uh, so yes while you're smoking your cigar if you do see an uneven burn you don't need to get your lighter and burn off uh, the the side that that has um, uh, the uneven burn, the, the, the lesser burn, uh, so to speak. What you should do is, uh, the way you hold your cigar, just make sure that um, if you, let's just say it burns more on this side, burns less on that side, it means that the air is circulating faster on this side and slower on this side. So all you need to do is just turn your cigar 180 degrees and keep smoking it like that. 
Okay, we have uh, more questions. What is the proper temperature to store cigars? Um, the cooler, the better. Uh, what you don't want is your cigars to go moldy. So I like my cigars a little on the drier side. It's recommended that you store your cigars anywhere between 60 to maybe even 75% humidity um, and around 20, um, not exceeding 20 to 22 degrees uh, in terms of the temperature. Um, what that does is it keeps um, your cigars from getting moldy. Now, mold is not a bad thing for cigars if it's white speckled mold that brushes off. So if you have a light, you can have a brush and lightly brush it off or scrape it off with your fingers and it feels like little grains of salt. That kind of mold is not bad, right? White mold is not bad. Green mold, very bad, okay? If you have green mold growing on your cigar, anywhere in your cigar, you should not smoke it, right? Because um, mold, from what you can see, is a mass gathering of uh, mold pores. And what they can do is, if you breathe it in, they can get stuck inside of you, right? And that's, it, it can make people quite sick. The white mold um, uh, is a result of the correct way of fermenting your cigars. So a lot of cigars that get put away for a very, very long time, they don't see the light of day, may get white mold, okay? But if you can wipe it off, um, if you can brush it off, then it is okay, it's good mold, okay? If it's mold that you can't brush off, well then, if it's at this end of the cigar, you can just cut it off and smoke. If it's at this end of the cigar, you can more often than not, if you are smoking that particular stick of cigar, use damp cloth, wipe it off, okay? S for, sh S for Sasha, Sasha. Uh, how do I maintain the proper humidity in my humidor? Okay, um, so I use um, Cigar Oasis um, and I've also used uh, humidity beads, right? Humidity beads can come in a pack uh, with a magnetic backing that sticks to the top of your humidor, okay? So it keeps everything um, regulating at uh, the same humidity. Um, Obviously, you need a good quality humidor. I have two of those, so um, I, I don't smoke at cigar bars as much as I used to anymore. I do most of that at home. Um, uh, and uh, that's how you should be keeping them. And Cigar Oasis is a, is a very, very cool device. Um, it is about this big. Uh, the top of it is a fan and a little computer with an LED screen and uh, the bottom part uh, is a water canister. So what will happen is it'll detect uh, electronically uh, the humidity inside your humidor and it'll regulate uh, the humidity by drawing water um, and if it's too dry, it'll then continue to run the fan without the water uh, to, in order to dry your cigars out. And you can actually link it to your mobile phone. So if you, if you want to check up uh, on the humidity, then uh, you can do that. Uh, for how long can cigars be stored? Um, well, as long as you want. But uh, for vintage cigars, like I, I, I actually had a uh, 2008. No, it was a it was a 2000, 2001. I think it was a 2001 cigar. It's a Partigas um, Series C. And uh, if, if I hadn't smoked those a couple of years ago, they wouldn't be good for smoking now because um, like aging wine, you do reach a peak at which the, the flavors are most balanced, uh, the cigar is most smooth, and then if you didn't smoke it during that period of time, it starts to drop off, right? So there's that one. Uh, hello, Don Chu, thanks for joining us. Uh, how do you blow smoke rings? Um, no idea. No, I, I know how to do it. It's just very hard to describe. I, I don't ever want to teach anyone to blow smoke rings and I'm not very good at them myself. So you can see now that uh, the cigar is burning quite nicely. Um, from where we actually started, from a frayed, cracked cigar to one that's burning correctly right now, that is how you rescue a cigar.
well okay then thank you very much for joining us i am going to go and enjoy the rest of my cigar uh thank you once again i will attempt to post uh more about cigars and whiskey uh, uh from now on since we're all locked down anyway and uh you know, there's nothing better to do than to sit back and enjoy a cigar. So, I uh, hope you guys are having a good day. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll catch you next time.